Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to today's video. Today's video is going to be looking at all of the long range computer models up to we've got online and we're going to be attempting to come to a view about what these models are forecasting for the British summer. Now all of these models that we're going to be using for uh, this video are going to be uh, uh, found on my links page so if you want to view these models for yourself just go to my links page on gasweathervids.com and you'll be able to see all of these models for yourself if you click on the links and go through to these various websites. The first thing I want to talk about before I get on with the video is the advertising. There will always be a video ad overlaying my weather forecast videos here on GavsWeatherVids.com. Please play these video ads because you'll be supporting GavsWeatherVids.com if you do that. If it's not a video ad, there might may just be a general ad. If it's something you're interested in, just click on it and go through to the uh, advertiser. But uh, obviously, you do have to be interested in the ad in the first place. Don't just click on it if you're not interested. Right then, the first model we're going to start with for today's video is going to be the Jamstech IOD model. This is from Japan and this is their uh, long range forecasting model. And the first thing we're looking at here is the global temperature anomalies for June, July and August. So what we want to focus on specifically is the British Isles and we can see that the uh, model is forecasting an above average temperature anomaly for the British Isles for the June, July and August period. The above average temperatures are indicated or above average anomaly temperatures are indicated by these pink colours here. The below average uh, temperature anomalies are the blue colours. So we can see that the model is forecasting above average temperatures for this summer a temperature anomaly here across the British Isles. And not only for the British Isles, but for the bulk of Europe and Eurasia as well is above average. But Ireland is nearer to normal, and uh, the temperature anomaly isn't greatly above average, just a little bit above average. Really. It wouldn't be, uh, there's not a huge temperature anomaly here from this. But certainly it is going for a slightly warmer than average summer for the British Isles. Now, if you have a look at the precipitation anomaly that the model is forecasting, we can see that the precipitation anomaly it's going for is very close to normal. We've got these very light pink or very light blue colours across uh, all parts of the British Isles and Ireland as well and down into France as well. So really Western Europe is being uh, forecast here to have a near normal precipitation anomaly for June, July and August. So the model is basically going for above average temperatures for the summer and near normal rainfall. So uh, that wouldn't be too bad a summer at all really, but it, there are other models we can look at and the next one we're going to look at is the Beijing model. This is the uh, uh, Beijing Climate Center model and what we're looking at here is the 500 millibar height anomaly prediction that the model is predicting for June, July and August. Now 500 millibars or 18,000 feet is quite an important part of the atmosphere because that is the area in the atmosphere where high and low pressure pressure develop and high and low pressure are what give us our weather as they're moved around by the jet stream running above. So the height anomaly charts at 500 millibars are indicating where we are likely to see above average heights or below average heights and those heights are then extrapolated into high and low pressure. Obviously high pressure will be at where we've got the above average heights, low pressure where we've got the below average heights. We can see that the Beijing Climate Center model is going for above average heights across many parts of the British Isles and Ireland. If we have a look we can see it actually backs into Scandinavia as well for June, July and and August. So again, this model is going for quite a decent summer with above average heights, we would expect uh, above average temperatures really across many parts of the British Isles. And this model is probably be giving us below average rainfall as well. So this model is going for really quite a decent summer. And you'll remember in last week, in last month's video, uh, the Beijing Climate Centre model was actually going for quite a unsettled second half to the summer. We to, did want to give us a settled start to the summer, but then it wanted to turn things unsettled in the second half of the summer. That's not the case on this month's update. This month's update wants to keep that high pressure, the above average heights, going throughout the June, July and August period. Now, obviously, this is an anomaly, so there would be uh, periods of unsettled weather with this. We wouldn't be seeing continuous high pressure, most likely. It's very rare 
uh, get a summer that has continuous high pressure. So this is the anomaly over three months. So uh, I say there would be periods within that three month period that it would see uh, more unsettled weather. But certainly the anomaly for the summer, June, July and August, is for above average heights around the British Isles. And I say that would be giving us most probably a drier than average summer and also a warmer than average summer as well. So that's going for quite a decent summer indeed. Next model we're going to look at is the Russian long range model. This is uh, the um, uh, forecasting model from uh, Russia and uh, this chart here that you're looking at is the, is the temperature anomaly for the globe through uh, May, June and July. So we haven't got the full summer period here yet but this is for May, June and July so for the start of the summer and we can see that this model is actually going for uh, below average temperatures across many parts of the country or I should say near and normal temperatures really the green colours here are indicating where we've got near and normal temperatures the orange colours are indicating above average temperature anomalies and the blue colours are indicating below average temperature so this uh, model, the Russian model, is going for uh, the green colours across the country that would be giving us pretty much near normal temperatures for May, June and July and if we scroll down the page we can see that we have got uh, anomalies for uh, precipitation as well and this is the precipitation anomaly chart for May, June and July and the orange colours here, the orange and uh, yellow colours here that we see is actually above normal precipitation so the Russian model is going for near normal temperatures and uh, above average rainfall for May, June and July. So this model isn't as good as the uh, first two models really if you're looking for settled and warm summer weather. This model wants to give us quite a uh, above, above average rainfall period and uh, as I say near normal temperatures whereas the other two models, the, uh, in the uh, Japanese and the Chinese models, they want to give us generally uh, above average temperatures and uh, quite dry weather. Last thing we're going to look at is the American model. This is the CFS model from the United States. This is their long range forecasting model. And these are the 700 millibar anomalies. So they're very similar to the 500 millibar anomalies, just at a slightly different area of the atmosphere. But uh, really, these are the 700 millibar anomalies for June, July, and August. And we can see that, uh, well, there's not much showing up at all really here. We've got uh, slightly above average height, perhaps to the far north and northeast of uh, Scandinavia, but really we've got very near normal heights going on here across uh, Britain and Ireland, and perhaps the bulk of uh, the northern hemisphere is uh, not really seeing much of an anomaly showing up. So I think what's happening with this model is that it hasn't yet really uh, come to a conclusion on the pattern and instead it's uh, keeping the anomaly is pretty much near normal across the whole of the northern hemisphere. This model, the CFS model, is uh, prone to uh, struggling to pick up the patterns, particularly in summer. Um, so I think really we've got to wait a bit longer for this model to really try and work out what the pattern will be for the summer at uh, 700 millibars. But in any case, it is an indication that we're probably going to be seeing near normal uh, height anomalies uh, for the May for the June, July and August period. And if you have a look at the uh, temperature anomaly that it's going for for June and July and August, we can see that really the whole of Europe is a forecast to have near uh, normal temperatures. The white colours here indicated near normal temperature anomalies through the summer. And rainfall, well, perhaps uh, a great signal there for above average rainfall across uh, Spain and into France so that would imply that we've got a southerly tracking jet stream probably going on there but uh, really for Britain and much of northern Europe the, uh, the precipitation anomaly isn't particularly strong and it's not really got a signal there though maybe a little bit of a signal for uh, a below average precipitation over Scandinavia probably indicating the chance of seeing high pressure up over Scandinavia with a subly tracking jet stream that would probably keep us in basically dry weather for some time of those southern areas will be at risk of seeing rain from that southerly tracking jet stream but the CFS model I don't think really has got the pattern yet for the summer and this is something that we do see with the CFS model. It does struggle uh, to get the pattern uh, uh, 
really a month, really from a month uh, out uh, from the forecast period. So you have to look at the uh, month that's uh, coming ahead uh, to get the pattern. And beyond that, it does struggle really to pick up the pattern. So. There is the models that we've got online at the moment, the long-range forecasting models. As I say, we've got the, ba the Beijing model and the Japanese model, both going for pretty decent summers. The Japanese model wants to give us near normal rainfall, but above average temperatures. The Beijing model will probably give us below average rainfall and above average temperatures. So the Beijing model is the best model for the summer, giving us a very decent summer indeed, I think, if that model comes off. But the other two models, the uh, Russian model isn't so good, that tends to uh, want to give us uh, near normal temperatures and above average rainfall for May, June and July. And finally, the CFS model I don't think has got the pattern yet, and uh, we're going to have to come back next month to see uh, whether the CFS model has actually come to a conclusion about what it wants to do for the pressure pattern for Britain and Europe. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. It's just a little pointer about what may happen through the coming summer. Remember, these models are highly experimental, and personally, I don't really give much credence to long-range forecasting. I'm uh, yet to be convinced that it is even possible, really. I think that the weather tends to be too chaotic for uh, computer models or uh, anybody really to be able to pick up uh, signals about what's going to happen months in advance but it's experimental and it's for fun but uh, don't take it too seriously so uh, come back tomorrow for the next video that's it for now